Hey, I want to show you something, a preset I made for Bitwig Studio that maybe helps you and I'm not aware of any preset that does something like this. It's very special. It's not something you need all the time, but it's hopefully useful. Okay, so I show you this here in Bitwig. Um, this is how, it, how it's called. It's a compressor analyzer. Okay, so we can load here this preset and you don't need any external VST devices or anything like this. It's completely Bitwig based. So here we have a compressor analyzer and this patch here generates more or less a signal that we send through a compressor and then we can test out what this compressor is actually doing to the signal. So here we have an AD uh, envelope that generates kind of a ramp signal. As you can see here, it just goes up for one uh, second, yeah, it's exactly one second. Using this curves um, module here, generating more or less like an audio signal with a very drastic increase of volume and a very drastic um, going down in volume. So this is basically our peak or our spike, audio spike that we want to see how the compressor reacts to that, right? And then we have down here a frequency, so we can change the frequency to anything we like. And this is uh, maybe handy uh, when you want to test uh, multi-band compressors, right? You have multiple bands. You have a low band, you have a mid band, you have a high top band, and each of these bands has a different compressor or maybe a different setting. And you can change your basically the sine oscillator frequency to test out individual bands. I'll show you this in a minute. So this is more or less the test generator here. I also added here some, te uh, some text to it so you can read about what's going on here. And then it sends out more or less here just an audio signal. So this audio signal is not really audible. It's a very slow, uh, rise and fall down in, in a signal, uh, but it's completely perfect for a compressor. So then I send it into an FX layer here. And on this FX layer, I have a compressor on the left side. I'm using here the Bitwig internal compressor. So this is on the left side. You can see it's panned, hard panned to the left. And then I have the dry signal on the right. And this is hard panned to the right. And it's just a tool device on there. So we have both both signals, the processed signal on the right and the, or the, the, the unprocessed signal on the right and the processed signal on the left side, right? And you can see here the compressor is reacting to the audio signal. I can see here it's just a, a level and then we raise and then we uh, fall down abruptly. And you can already see what the compressor does a bit in this graph to the signal. It's already well made in my opinion here with this Bitwig compressor. So you can see what's happening there. So we have a compressor in there and then we have here um, an analyzer. It's a second patch more or less. And here we receive the signal, the dry signal um, on the left side, which is this tur turquoise, tur 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 turquoise <laughs> color on the left side. Um, so this is the compressor signal, as you can see here, it's uh, compressed and pulled down. And then we have here on the right side, the blue signal, which is the ori original, the dry signal. And it's not really clear how it looks like here because the follower is maybe a bit too, too fast. So let's go here maybe to 80 milliseconds, right? So the more you ease this uh, parameter here, the more clearer the signal becomes, but you also introduce already here a slight uh, release time, of course, in the dry signal. Um, anyway, so this is the follower here. The follower analyzes both signals for the left and the right uh, side at the same time. And then we have here at the lower uh, uh, oscilloscope, we have the difference. So we just take the left signal and then subtract it here from the right signal. So we get the difference. So we can see exactly how um, the difference is between both signals and we can read here more or less what the compressor does. And then I also take the signal here and output this here to the audio channel or the audio out. And then we can use it here in the oscilloscope just so you can see it without going into the patch. So this, this was the idea. So we can go no, now to the uh, compressor here and can change some settings and you can see how this reacts, right? So let's say um, we uh, change the attack time. 
you can see how this here becomes shorter, right? Or if we make the attack time longer, you can see here how it behaves. Also down here, right? The um, compressor reacts pretty fast and pulls down the signal to a certain level here. Maybe we can um, go back here with the threshold. You can see, so we don't do too much uh, gain reduction here. Also the release time, when we make the release time pretty fast, it's actually not that fast, it's 38.9 uh, milliseconds for some reason, that's the smallest um, value here. Um, so you can see it reacts faster here and when you have a longer release time, it takes more time here. Um, also the ratio, we go down with the ratio, you can see the gain reduction here is not that much as when we have the uh, at infinity, which is probably like a limiter. Um, yeah, and you can see um, the, always here what the compressor does and what the dry signal does. So you can see here the dry signal is much higher in volume at this position. So the ratio is doing something here. It's probably because of the threshold. If you have the threshold all the way at zero uh, dB, nothing has happened to the signal, right? So it's the same level. Also pulling this down here, you can see how much actually here the gain reduction is. Uh, changing the signal. So this is the difference, this is the dry signal and this is the processed signal. So you have a perfect overview of what the compressor is doing to the signal and you can use that to maybe change some of the settings of your compressor. You can also use this to uh, clone settings from a VST. So instead of having here this Bitwig compressor on there, you can maybe use um, a VST device where you can't look into the device, right? Or you have a preset on a certain compressor that you really, really like and you maybe can't clone it just from hearing what's going on. You can see it now here a bit clearer what's going on with the signal. Uh, also here, if the, if, uh, if the gain reduction is too much, you can use it the amplify knob and just scale the signal a bit down. Um, all you usually care for is the shape here of the attack and the release and maybe how much gain re reduction you do. Um, so then uh, if you want to clone, for instance, a setting, so you have this uh, VSC device here on the process channel and you can use then maybe the dry channel here and use a compressor on it. Let's say the, the Bitwig one, right? And then what you do is you try to change all these settings here until uh, maybe a threshold down, ratio up, I don't know, attack, until you have here with the uh, left channel the same shape. It's almost, <laughs> almost the same shape. Um, you have the same shape as the shape from the true dynamics compressor here, right? So you can match more or less um, the signals. And what you want to see here is basically that you have no signal in the middle. So no difference. You, you want to have both compressors line up and then you cloned perfectly the compressor setting from the VST to Bitwig Studio. So the whole idea about this is basically that you can see what's going on with the compressor instead of just hearing what's going on with the compressor and you can use some compressor settings from a VST in Bitwig Studio just with a Bitwig Studio device. So if you switch to Linux, for instance, like I'm trying to do this for two years now, switching to, 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 to Linux, and you want to um, just take your compressors with you, right? Or you want to have the same settings or you have a nice black box compressor setting. I use here this, um, this one here all the time, Squash. It's a multiband compressor, but I have no idea what this thing is doing in all of these. I think it's it's a four band splitted compressor. I have no idea what the settings are, but this one here, I can try to analyze it and can match the same kind of energy or the same kind of processing. Um, yeah, with just Bitwig devices. So this this was my idea. I have this here on my in my preset store for quite a while. I did this, I don't know, a year ago and I always wanted to make a video about it. This is the video. I put this also completely for free on my um, Bitwig preset GitHub library. So you can just download this. It's a very simple patch. Maybe you can make some better choices here and there. Maybe you can make it better. Send, send the presets to me. 
I'm open for everything. So this is the compressor analyzer. Uh, you can find it on my GitHub. I hope it helps you to analyze some VST devices, some presets and just clone some stuff. Uh, I did something like this for some compressors and it it works nicely. I know there are some VST devices out there from other YouTubers um, that do something like this um, a bit more precise, a bit better probably, because here it's just Bitwig, you have a lot of oversampling and all the graphs are not really, you know, 100%, but you get a feel, you get a sense of what the, um, what the compressor is actually doing in the background. Okay, that's it, enough talk. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Leave a thumbs up and also maybe a subscription and um, whatever else you want to, want to do. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.